What is up guys and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host Andrew from Coaster Thrills joined by my co-host G- G- Caleb. Caleb? Are you here? Oh, I guess he's not here. Well, th- there you go. Well, I guess I'm doing this episode by myself. Great. All right. So, <laughs> as you can tell, Caleb's not here. Uh, we've been reaching him all day. He just could not find the time to be here today. So, guess what? I'm going to be doing this podcast by myself. So, it's going to be really cool. I feel like I'm going to have more time to just connect with y'all, the viewers, and it's going to be a good time. Probably it's going to be a shorter episode, but we're just going to try this out. It's going to be great. Just me, the host, just, you know, connecting with y'all. It's the second ever episode. And I'm just excited. Uh, I do have some stuff planned for today, um, but mainly due to it being Coast Unscripted, I'm just going to go unscripted. But here we are. We are starting this podcast for the second ever episode we have ever done. Uh, I am super excited for this episode. Um, I think we've got some good responses from the first episode. Uh, obviously, we're still trying to improve, but hopefully y'all liked it. Um, we're trying to spread this everywhere since the last episode. Uh, we have got it on to Spotify, um, and we're still working on Apple Podcasts. Hopefully, right now, you can see if it's there, but we're getting it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbeam, the main place where we get this stuff from, and YouTube, so you can listen to it everywhere, anywhere like that you have. It is going to be very accessible for anybody, uh, and we're just trying to grow this podcast to be one of the coaster podcasts that are great. Um, we're really trying to make this the best possible, and it's unfortunate that Caleb won't be here today, but we're still trying to make it the best. Um, but and there's so many places that you can go and watch this. Uh, and obviously, we are trying to get this out every Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, it may be a little later today because we are filming this a little bit late. Uh, right now, I am filming this at about 4 p.m. on Sunday, so... It may not be at 6, but we are still going to try and get this out as early as we can. Uh, You know, we want to get this as close to the time as we possibly can. Uh, We ran a little bit late in filming it this week. Normally, we would try to film it on Friday or Saturday, which we kind of did last time. But this time, we just couldn't find the time to. And now, since it's last minute and Caleb could not make it for this episode, it's just going to be me. But... Next week, he is going to be back. That is a definite. And we may or may not have some plans. Um, You know, who knows? There just might, might be a guest. Y'all are just going to have to wait and see. It is going to be great. But pretty much what happened, um, what has been happening recently, um, you know, I just went to Bush Gardens yesterday with some of my great friends. Uh, Another person from school, Brock, is one of my friends. Uh, also, Tyler uh, and Christian and Etai were there. Um, if you don't know them, uh, Christian and Etai, Christian from Theme Park Horizons, and Etai from Theme Park HQ, definitely go check them out on Instagram, YouTube, all of that stuff. Uh, they both have great content, but got to see them yesterday. Uh, got to ride Iron Gwazi even more times. Um, I've ridden Iron Gwazi 62 times now, which I think is just insane. It's just insane that... You know, you can ride one of your favorite coasters that is just built, like, right next to you, like, so many times. Like, it op- it just opened, like, recently, but it's so nice to be able to have a coaster that's that good in your backyard. Referring to Caleb, Backyard Thrills, as, like, something I've always said with Caleb, like, he's like, yeah, it's so great to have <laughs> a coaster in your backyard, but you know what? It's a backyard thrill. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but it's a backyard thrill, kind of. I mean, it really is. I know it's the stupidest joke ever, but it's a backyard thrill, really, and it's so nice to have just finally an RMC, which RMC is my favorite manufacturer, so it's just super nice to have an RMC that's just so close to you. One thing that I just always wanted is, like, an RMC, like, close to me, and now we have an RMC and Velocicoaster, so really, like... Us Ford enthusiasts, we are so spoiled. We have Iron Gwazi, Velocicoaster, Mako, Disney World, Universal. We're just so spoiled. I honestly like feel so bad for y'all who live like in the northern parts because it's like it's just it's unfortunate. I mean, I mean, I feel like so many people are moving down here now, like to Florida, 
lots of people are that I know are. It's just it, it's everything's everybody's moving here. It's great. Um, but we do have lots of stuff planned for this episode. We got the news. We got uh, some ride rankings, ride opinions, and unpopular opinions. We have so much planned for this episode. So much news, and it is going to be a journey. It's going to be a blast. Um, I'm super hyped for this episode. Hopefully, are you? Um, but we've got so much planned. Unfortunately, Caleb just obviously still could not make it. But we are going to start off with the news. Our first better news, we have Peppa Pig, uh, the Peppa Pig theme park opening on February 24th. So that is approximately four days from when this podcast is being filmed on the 24th. And who would not be excited for Peppa Pig? Of course. I mean, you got so many world-class rides. You got Daddy Pig's Coaster, which, in my opinion, it's a contender. It may be my number one favorite coaster. <laughs> is obviously the joke but still daddy pig's coaster legendary i know a lot of people who are gonna try to go to that i'm super hyped i mean who would not be hyped for daddy pig's coaster i mean come on i mean we also got grampy rabbits dinosaur adventure i mean come on and peppa pig's balloon ride so much to offer at this great amusement park or theme park whatever i mean honestly like to be fair like like only in florida like the whole resort like right now they are just doing so well they, that was is really going to a good resort. I mean, they have the main Lego Land Park. They have the water park. They have the new Peppa Pig theme park, two hotels. That place is really turning into, like, a very good place to go to. Like, not going to lie, it's probably, like, I haven't seen that much about the other Lego Land parks. But this one, I feel like really is a contender to be, like, up there. It just looks so nice. Uh, I've, been, I've been going to Lego Land forever, and it's so nice that they can get even more stuff to add to that resort, I mean, Peppa Pig would be great for the park, it's gonna be great for the families, and hopefully he does good, but Daddy Pig's Coaster is obviously the main draw, I mean, come on, I mean, Daddy Pig's Coaster has everything, I mean, seriously, you have, like, you honestly have, you have the queue, I mean, come on, that queue is themed to, like, the house, it is insanely themed, it's such in-depth, <laughs> it's just, who would not be excited for this thing, it's Daddy Pig, come on. But our next better news, we do have Icebreaker, the, the two, like, about two days from now when this podcast was being filmed, uh, it opened to the public on February 18th, so it's finally great that this thing got open to the public. Um, I'm gonna take a sip of water, just a second. There you go, you got your three minute break, but, or three second break, but, yeah, back to SeaWorld, they are opening, uh, they just opened Icebreaker, so it's great for the park. I mean, obviously, after how many years, it's been insane on how long this thing has been waiting for. But with it opening, we do have some changes to the original, like, concept and stuff about it. It used to be, now with the height requirement, you have 48 inches. You used to have 48 inches. Um, and with the 48 inches, you used to have Icebreaker. You have other rides, such as, like, Cheetah Hunt and... Iron Gwazi, which right now is open to the uh, pass holders, which, here's the funny thing. SeaWorld Orlando changed Icebreaker's height requirement from 48 to 54 inches, which, you know, I have a mixed opinions on this. It's not the best for, you know, the people who are, like, you know, those kids that are, tr like, like, in between 48 and 53. It's not the best for them. Obviously, I just feel, like, really bad for them because... Really, this this icebreaker is really just not a family coaster anymore. It's now, with the height requirement, it's now a thrill coaster on par with, you know, Kraken, Manta, and Mako, which is a little disappointing. Um, I know, I mean, it, it is it does have its crazy moments, but it really is no longer a step-up coaster, which it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. I know probably the park did not want to do this, but, you know, it's, it's here, it's here, it's just... It's, it's official now, and nothing can change that. Honestly. I mean, it probably could be changed, but still. It is just unfortunate, especially for all the kids that are going to ride it. It's no longer a step-up coaster, so which is a little disappointing, obviously. But, hey, do you know what could be a step-up coaster, though? Here comes the transition. <laughs> Project Penguin at SeaWorld Orlando. So, we do have some news with that. They uh, have starting to put up the walls around that area where... The new Project Penguin could possibly be. Now, Project Penguin has been rumored for a while. I think it was 
may possibly rumored to come in 2021. Obviously, that's not happened, but this thing is rumored to be a surf coaster made by B&M, which, you know, I mean, who knows? Like, we have, we are so in the dark with what that can be. Uh, we have no idea what that could be. It's, it's just a shot in the dark. Some people have speculations, but who knows? It could be like a surf coaster. It could be a wing coaster. Anything. It's going to be B&M most likely, but that thing is located in the, like, you know, area of the park, which if you, like, let's say you enter, you go to the right. It's right there. I think it's a great location for this coaster. Um, It would be, it would just pretty much, like, fill out, you know, the whole park with attractions. Like, it used to be, like, so weird, like, because you would have, like, all of the coasters on Mako's side and then, like, nothing on the other side. But now, with the additions of, you know, Icebreaker and hopefully uh, Project Penguin, it is going to be, like, the whole park is going to be now rounded out, which is really great for that park's layout. They used to have not a good layout, which now it is great. So, I mean, the, the SeaWorld Orlando, I feel like it's just becoming a world-class park. I go there all the time, and now they have... Mako, Icebreaker, the Surf Coaster, which looks to be great, and of course, Manta and Kraken, which, this park's lineup, which is gonna be great in the next couple of years, but they do, of course, have the walls up there in that area, so it's just great to see that this coaster has progress, especially with everything that's happened with SeaWorld during COVID and all of that, but moving on to the next better news, we do have, you guessed it, no, you didn't, <laughs> but here we are, uh, Cedar Fair rejected SeaWorld. So, I think this is great. Um, if you didn't know what happened, Cedar Fair went, or Cedar Fair went, uh, had an offer on coming from SeaWorld. So, where SeaWorld would just outright buy out all of Cedar Fair, which, overall, Cedar Fair is, it's weird, to, it's kind of like a weird thing to say, but in the first place, no debt included. Cedar Fair is worth more than SeaWorld, but since SeaWorld has been doing really good lately, which I think is fantastic, and Cedar Fair is still, like, really struggling to get back into it with, you know, COVID and all of that, they had a hard time getting back into it, and they are still in debt, which, with Cedar Fair being in debt, SeaWorld is now worth more than Cedar Fair, uh, making it able to, where SeaWorld, SeaWorld can now make an offer to buy uh, Cedar Fair, which... Obviously, that did not go through, which I think is a good thing. I love the way Cedar Fair is run. Uh, every single park, I feel like, in the Cedar Fair chain is just... You, it's, every like every single park in Cedar Fair chain, I just feel like it's just kept up well. I mean, I've been to all 12 of them, and we're keeping with the theme of that later in this podcast. Just stay tuned for that. But Cedar Fair just runs their parks, like, so well. And it's just... Some people may not think that, but in my opinion... I just love Cedar Fair. They are my favorite chain. Um, and they just run their parks so well. Um, it is great for them. It's just, it's great that they do that. But one thing I really do think that could have benefited uh, both chains is, let's say SeaWorld went in, they didn't ask to buy the whole chain, and they just asked to buy some of the smaller parks in the Cedar Fair chain. Some that come to mind, uh, Worlds of Fun, I feel like that would just become a fantastic uh, Bush Gardens Park, like, Bush Gardens, like, Missouri, that would be really cool, or Bush Gardens over Missouri, Kansas City, whatever, uh, and with, like, the lands, you know, that go around Worlds of Fun, that, I feel like that would just be a fantastic Bush Gardens Park, but maybe, just maybe in the future, that could come to fruition, but who knows, I mean, I'm just still glad that Cedar Fair did not accept the offer, I know it would have been great in some aspects of the equation to where SeaWorld could benefit, like, some of those parks, but I feel like it would just be too overwhelming. I just, like, I could not see SeaWorld owning Cedar Point, Kings Island, all of those. It just sounds so weird to me that that could possibly be the case, but I'm just glad it didn't go through, but, I mean, I just hope, I mean, Cedar Fair, like, Michigan's Adventure is another one that comes to mind. That would have been great if it was bought by SeaWorld, um... I think it just would have been better if SeaWorld bought some of the smaller parks, which, and just turned them over, which, um, they did not happen, but still. Cedar Fair, I feel like, is a greatly run train. It's just right now, they are just struggling. And going along with that struggling in Cedar Fair, you know, Top Thrill Dragster, or the coaster that, you know, early in 2021, um, it had that incident where a uh, person standing along got hit in the head uh, with an object flying off Top the Dragster. Um, it is closed, sadly. For 2022 now I get that it's it's probably um, 
you know, it's, it's a good reason to it, and it's, it's just reasonable, and we don't know, like, why they're doing this, but still, um, it's just really unfortunate. I mean, Top of the Dragster is one of the best coasters in the world. I know some people, especially Caleb, that love that thing so much. Uh, for Caleb, it ranks as number two. I mean, for me, it's not as, like, as good as that, because probably because I've ridden it more, but still, I love Top of the Dragster, and it's just really unfortunate that it will be closed for 2022. Hopefully, through the whole 2020 year, they could improve it and see what happens. Uh, we'll just see what happens. Hopefully, they can improve it, make it more safer. Uh, one of the rumors that has been going around is that they would um, redo the whole queue, or not just redo it, but they would put a roof over it. Um, that kind of would eliminate some of like the factor of it where it's just a drag racing or something. Hopefully they still keep the stands, you know, those like or the bleachers. Uh, so pretty much what Cedar Point has, they have bleachers uh, right at top of the dragster. In my opinion, I hope they keep that. Um, I mean, it's really a great way to see the coaster just launch out. It's a great view of the point for a ton of just the regular guests walking through. Hopefully they keep that, but whatever they have to do to just make it safer and make that queue safer, I think is absolutely necessary. I mean, number one, over a uh, rule for the parks is safety and if they do it they have to do that but another rumor for like top of dragster uh they honestly probably one of the things they could do is they could just remove it all together obviously the pretty much the whole enthusiast community we just hope that it just that does not happen i mean that is the worst case scenario i mean I mean, even with the problems with Intamin and it breaking down all the time, that could come to, into factor, and it may just be to where Cedar Fair is like, well, it's just too much to handle, and they just close it, which I would really hate for that. Just possibly, like, even if that happened, maybe there could be a replacement as some type, but I know, if they close top of the dragster, everybody, like, all the coast enthusiasts, everybody will be demanding a new ride, which makes sense 100%. See, uh, Cedar Point, I feel like, is really struggling because of this. Um, and I really just hope it comes back for a strong 23. I know 2023. I know a lot of people want this, but we'll just have to wait and see. But for our final bit of news, um, it's more of a minor detail, minor bit of news. Uh, Cheddar Chase, uh, the new uh, relocated Wild Mouse from Lake Winnie, is moving to Alabama Adventure, and they have got major construction done on this thing. It looks to be a uh, great, um, I mean, not great as a wild mouse, but still, uh, it'll be a great coaster for the park, um, I mean, it'll be a great fit, to be honest, uh, M Alabama Adventure is definitely gonna come to 2020, to the 2022 season with a bang, they're gonna have Rampage, a Woody that I, like, really like, um, they're going to have some of that retract, which is absolutely great, um, and they're gonna have this new coaster, so now they have three coasters in their lineup, and hopefully, uh, they get to improve on that. I really did like Alabama Adventure when I went in the season of 2020. So hopefully they, I mean, they just keep adding. What they're doing right now is absolutely great. Um, Cheddar Chase looks to be a solid new addition. And hopefully it'll benefit the park in all ways that would be positive. So that is it for the news. Um, obviously, there was a, a ton of news. I know uh, the news might not be as entertaining when... Because I feel like it'll be more entertaining with Caleb here, but still, we're just going to go through this episode. It's going to be a shorter episode, but we'll see how it goes. It's I feel like it's been doing good so far, but moving on to our next segment of the podcast is Ride Rankings. So, we have, for this episode, Ride Rankings. Now, going along with the theme of the past parts of this episode, we have Cedar Fair. And what I'll be doing in this ranking is me, Andrew, ranking my top 12 favorite Cedar Fair parks. Now, with Caleb not being here, it's a little more boring. I mean, Caleb, uh, he hasn't been to as many Cedar Fair parks, so me being to all 12, I feel like I get a grasp on every single opinion of all the parks and i feel like i really could rank this really nice so let's start out with the number 12 spot um and number 12 uh yes i am including it we have gilroy gardens the legendary gilroy gardens located in northern california near san jose and i just went there uh this past 2021 um i got the two credits they have uh two smaller credits uh one of them's a kitty coaster and the other one's a mine train and 
this is a very nice park. It's very well kept and you know, they have some great theme. It just looks really nice. The location of this place is fantastic. It has so many things about it. It's just really going for it. I know it's not completely owned by Cedar Fair, which obviously it's it's not I think it's half owned by Cedar Fair, so that's why some people may not count it as a Cedar Fair park, but just because it's at number twelve, I'm just gonna keep it in here. Uh it's not it's not big enough for a park for me to put it higher. Um I mean who knows? It's it's not that big of a park, so it just with the coaster collection that they have, it won't be as higher compared to the other parks on this list. As coming in at the number eleven spot is Obvious, honestly, which probably just may be the worst Cedar Fair Park. This is Michigan's Adventure. I know Greenway Gardens and Michigan's Adventure uh, may not seem close if you just look at them from like a coaster's perspective, but the, from the experience at both of these parks, it comes close. Michigan's Adventure, when I went in 2019, it was not a fun experience. I know Shivering Timbers was open, and it was good, but for me, Shivering Timbers just... It's not a good stand-up coaster. It has some good airtime moments. It's pretty much like a smaller down, like a smaller wooden hyper coaster, so to say. But it just doesn't do it for me. I like it. It has some good airtime moments, but really, it's not a stand-up coaster in my opinion. The same with the rest of the park. The rest of the park is just boring. It's just everything about it is just eh. I mean, I don't know. It's something of Michigan's Adventure is just not fun. I don't know why. It's just every, like, I, I've only been there one time. Maybe uh, the visit, if I go there again, which probably won't be soon, maybe it'll be better then, but still, like, for me, I don't know. Michigan's Adventure is just, eh. It's, it's just leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you know Cedar Fair does such good with the other parks, which a major step up is at the number 10 spot. We have Worlds of Fun, which Worlds of Fun, as we went through earlier in this podcast, it is located uh, near Kansas City in Missouri. Um, I still like this park. Um, it's just, I know some parks that, I mean, they're better than it. Cedar Fair, with all their parks, is really good. Um, everything about Cedar Fair is great. Even the lower tier parks just look great. Cedar Fair is very clean with all everything they have, especially with Worlds of Fun. Uh, what's a fun for me at least every time you go is just a great experience they have a fantastic top three like honestly they have a fantastic top three and prowler uh, mamba which mamba is oh is okay it doesn't do that much in patriot patriot's a good invert prowler is a very good gci but everything about this park is great i mean it's a great fun time all the lands are fantastic i definitely recommend going here during the grand carnival event because this whole park will be just be like, it'll be a huge celebration. This park is great during that event. With the colors that this park has, is just a great experience. I know they do have all of that space, which they have so much they can improve on, so much they can add. It's just, it's, it's a little bit of a missed opportunity, you know. This park really needs something new, even though they already have a great experience when you go to this park. The same with number nine. This park needs a new coaster, and that park is Dorney Park, located in Pennsylvania. I know they did have that gravity group, potentially, the gravity group shuttle coaster potentially coming soon. Definitely hope that comes uh it was canceled the plans were canceled but definitely hope uh they will bring those back because that looks like a great fit but this park is really fun um they have once again some great coasters uh steel force i absolutely love um it has some great moments to it great airtime everything about it is great um and then you have hydra which hydra is really fun i feel like hydra is just one of the most underrated coasters out there like seriously um, all of the inversions are great. Hydra is just so wacky and so great. This park is pretty much the same two worlds of fun, like, in the aspect of it having a great atmosphere. Cedar Fair just does great with their atmospheres, and the cleanliness and everything about this park is fantastic. Uh, the location, Pennsylvania, I mean, when I just went, uh, when I went in 2020 was the last time I went, it was raining, so... I didn't get to ride all the coasters, but it was still a fun time. But one of a, another, like another fun time you can have is coming in at the number eight spot. That is Valley Fair. 
Valley Fair located in Minnesota. I think it's Shakopee, Minnesota. This park is very... I, keep, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but... This park has something magical about it. I don't know. It's just... Something about it is magical. I know this, like, it's a weird layout. Everything about it is weird, but they have, like, Possessed, what, not Possessed, um, Deal Venom, which has the holding break. That is a part, like, to go to the park alone for, but they also have a hidden gem. Excalibur is great. Uh, Renegade is fantastic GCI. Uh, this park, I know it just, it's overlooked, I feel like, in my opinion. Um, I, I feel like, I mean, the Coaster Coaster Collection may not be, like, on par with, like, some of the other top-tier parks, but this park, I feel like, is just, it's so underrated, in my opinion. I know someone, Joe, used to live uh, in Minnesota. He went to go here all the time. Uh, I definitely know he likes it, but that's, I mean, I feel like almost no enthusiasts go here. Like, it's weird to think about it. Like, I only know one person has been here. Like, it's so weird because Valley Fair is just so out there. It's so north. And it's only open for, like, it's not open for that much during the year. So, it's very unfortunate that a lot of people don't recognize this park. But if you get the chance, I 110% recommending recommend visiting Valley Fair. Especially since I ranked it over Dorney Park for Worlds of Fun. Which, that alone just tells you how much I like Valley Fair. But coming in at the number 7, I know it may seem a little low, but we have Canada's Wonderland. Which, Canada's Wonderland, I've only been there one time, which... Is a little, I mean, I feel like I, I really want to go there again since the Yukon Striker is now there. But I went there in 2018, so I got on all the main coasters that are there today except Yukon Striker. But I really want to go back here, but I, this park has so many coasters. Uh, Leviathan has a B&M Giga, and of course they have Behemoth and B&M Hyper. They have a good top two. The rest of the coasters are just eh, but now since they have Yukon Striker, it evens it out a little bit more, but still, great park. So many coasters. A lot of them are just eh, but still. Uh, atmosphere is great. It gets in t so many visitors. Since it's located near Toronto, they are there are so many people that just go and visit this park. Sometimes it can be very crowded, like definitely crowded, especially when I went there previously. But still, it is a great park. Definitely recommend visiting it. Um, I don't have that many stories from it because it's like, it's, it was, we only went there, we went there two days, actually. But we had to cut one of the days short because they did close early, which was a little disappointing, but still. A uh, great park in Canada. It's, Canada is only like really, really, really good amusement park. Um, I know they have La Ronde, but I have not heard the best reviews on La Ronde, like, <laughs> <clears throat> cough cough coaster studios but you know but hey Canada's Wonderland great park in Canada and I definitely really want to go back there soon but moving in at number six is an even better park than Canada's Wonderland that is California's Great America yeah very high but still I love this park to bits they have in my opinion one of the best top twos out there and Royal Blazer and Gold Striker both of those coasters making my top 25 which alone is a very good thing for a park to do and this park is so good I've been here in 2021 and in 2019 everything about it is fantastic Cedar Fair I know has been has plans for this park and in a couple in the next couple years they will be doing some major stuff with it hopefully uh this actually comes to fruition due to covid but still um this park is fantastic i cannot say enough good things about this park there has been so many good experiences i've had here uh every time i go to california is a great experience but when i go here i just feel joy every time visiting this park it's definitely one of my favorite parks in california and coming in at my number six in my cedar fair parks but at number five we have Another park that I just love to bits, Cedar Fair, coming in clutch. We have King's Dominion, which King's Dominion, another park with a great top two. Probably, maybe, just maybe my favorite top two in Intimidator of the Roof, 305 and uh, Twisted Timbers. But this park's atmosphere is just top notch. Uh, I know Volcano really adds a damper to that, but... In the next couple of years, this park is going to be a park to contend with, especially with Tumbili now opening in 2022. That whole new section of the area of the park is going to look absolutely fantastic. You're going to have Tumbili and that whole jungle section. I know they're going to try to 
give um, it justice, Volcano justice, with a proper replacement uh, other than Tumbili, which Tumbili did replace the um, part of the that section where the crypt was. I know that whole area is just going to look so good. They're going to have Tumbili. Avalanche is getting, I'm not sure if it's getting renamed, but it's going to get repainted. It's going to look fantastic, especially with that new uh, coaster. Hopefully, they'll be adding in replacement of Volcano, but still, everything about other, other than this park is still fantastic. I-305, Twisted Timbers alone makes this park a park to contend with. I mean, what else can I say? King's Dominion is fantastic, but an even more fantastic park is Carowinds, taking the number four spot, and Carowinds everything up it's just i keep saying this is cedar fair but like still this carowinds carowinds is just fantastic they have so many good coasters a fantastic coaster lineup some of the most underrated coasters out there and of course you have north carolina and south carolina splitting through the park which is just a fun experience alone you have fury which goes in between those two states you have intimidator you have afterburn you have copperhead you have so many good parts of this park that just makes it so magical. When visiting with friends, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, when me and Caleb, that was one of the parks we went to out of state in 2021. Uh, funny story, we actually got there at 12, like, or 12 or 1 in the morning, and guess what we did? We stayed at that Spring Hill uh, hotel that is right there, so... We just went, even at like 1 a.m., we went outside, got pictures of Fury. We were so hyped for that next day. This park looks absolutely fantastic from the outside. Fury just makes this park look absolutely, like, so good. And this park just is fantastic overall. Cedar Fair really has been making this the Cedar Point of the South. They have been doing a fantastic job with it, and I cannot wait to see what they do with this park in the future. The same with... At number three spot is Knott's Berry Farm, which we all know that's supposed plans for the Giga coming to this park, which the Giga would be so well needed. They need a capacity eater, which is great. But this is the park that is probably the most themed out of all of Cedar Fair. It is such a good park. They have like they have Ghost Town, they have the boardwalk, whatever it's called. They have so many good areas of this park that is just so good. The theming of this place just makes it so magical. Everything about Knott's Berry Farm is great. They have Hang Time, Accelerator, Ghost Rider, one of my favorite wooden coasters out there. And Knott's Berry Farm is just uh, such a world-class park. Personally, it is my favorite park in California. I know it may be a shock. I mean, Six Flags Magic Mountain is up there, but I just feel like Knott's Berry Farm just edges it out, mainly for that factor of it being so well-themed. The experience of this park is absolutely fantastic. The same with Kings Island, the runner-up to the number one, coming at number two spot. And Kings Island, what else can you say about this park? This park is absolutely fantastic. Everything about it is magical. I mean, you have so many good coasters. And what else can you say? I mean, I feel like there's not that much to say about these parks because, like, everything everything Cedar Fair is so world-class. It's, I know, I may be sounding like a Cedar Fair fanboy, but I kind of am. I mean, like, Cedar Fair is just so good, and that really shows the King's Eye on. They have kept this park up so well. Um, I've had so many stories from this place. Um... I mean, Caleb just went there for the first time in 2021. It, it's, it, it's, 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 Kings Island is a park that I have gone to in like 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21. Hopefully this year, it's a park that I will want to go to every year. It is so good. What else is there to say? I mean, everything I feel like has been said about this park. It is so good. Uh, it's, what else can be said? It's fantastic. But also, what else could be said? You guessed it. Taking the number one spot is... Cedar Point, I mean, come on. Cedar Point is America's rock and roller coaster. What else can you say? Cedar Point is incredible. The experience from when you just get up to, like, on the causeway and just seeing the whole park from that road, it is an experience to behold. Once you go there from the first time, you are just, your mind is, like, blown up. It is, <laughs> it is such a good experience. I know... Like, for all of these enthusiasts, you either have been there, it's your number one, or I know some people don't rank it that high, but it's either your number one park, 
or you just want to go there and you haven't been there you just want to go there it is so good i know for a lot of people it's the number one i know for some people they just don't like it which i still don't understand i know the experience may not be as good as may hope it's just their perspective for me i feel like every time i go to cedar point it just it, the experience is top notch i feel like i have never had a bad experience at this park and that shows with it being at my number one spot for the Cedar Fair Parks. But there it is. That is my ranking for the Cedar Fair Parks. In the 12 parks that they have, technically 11 and a half, but still, it is great. But really with this podcast, what we're trying to do is we're delivering the best quality content we're trying to do. I know, just keep going through it. We have so much stuff we're going to go to. I'm trying to go unscripted, but hey, we're keeping on with what we're going to do. And... For the next uh, subject of this podcast, we have ride rankings. Ride opinion, and this is a new uh, subject or new part of the podcast that we are introducing today. We're going to try to do this with every episode of the podcast, but ride opinion, um, we're going to do a new coaster every day. Um, we're going to try to make it to where it's Caleb and I have both written it. I know I've written more than Caleb, but this time we are doing it where with a coaster that I have written and Caleb has written, but since he's not here, I'm we're still probably going to do it, but next episode he may do something on it but this coaster is orion orion opening in 2020 was a bnm giga that came to king's island i know um some people may not call it a giga which you know i don't know it's i would definitely call it a giga i know it's 287 feet tall but the main way that makes it a giga is it has a 300 foot drop which if Cedar Fair marks it as a giga, it's a giga because really, Cedar Fair invented the term giga with when they opened Millennium Force in, was it 2000? That's like, they pretty much made the name of it being a giga. And since if they call this a giga, it's simply a giga. And really, if, like I know you'd be like, well, it's only 287 feet, which it's a 300 foot drop though. I mean, that just tells you. I mean, Phantom's Revenge is has a way, like, people classify that as a hyper, but the drop is, like, the, the main height of Phantom's Revenge is not, is not 200 feet, which, but it has a drop that is obviously a giga drop, not giga, a hyper drop, but, I mean, if you, and the same with the Polish Cherry, I mean, it has a taller height, it has a taller drop than the height, which, you know, if they say that for Orion, I mean, if they say that for those coasters, why can it not be said for Orion? Uh, I know that's a little bit <laughs> I was trying to get through, but hey, I mean, if I think if you know what I'm getting to, you know what I'm getting to. Uh, Orion, in my opinion, is definitely a giga. If you think not, whatever is your opinion, but uh, definitely, <laughs> I definitely think it's a giga. So what we're doing through this ride opinion, we're going to be sharing our scores of the coaster out of 10 and our ranking and our ranking. So out of the 608 coasters that I have ridden, I personally rank Orion at number 25, which just barely, it just barely makes my ranking. It's either 25 or 24. I probably have to check later, but that's where it's for me right now. I absolutely love Orion. If it makes my top 25, it is fantastic. And for an overall score out of 10, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Um, definitely really good. Uh, normally, all the coasters in my top 25 have a 10 out of 10, but this is just a little bit lower. It's 9 out of 10, which I know 9 out of 10 is still absolutely fantastic. Orion, I absolutely love Orion. There's so many good elements to it. There is uh, that ending airtime hill, which in the back, like, let me tell you, in the back, that is such a good airtime moment. It is fantastic. Uh, Orion's belt, which am I, it's such a good helix. It is very intense. I almost gray out on this thing. And there's also the speed hill in the airtime and the airtime in between the speed hill and the Orion's belt, which... Definitely, as you can tell, the second half of this coaster is way better than the first half. Um, in the first half, you have that huge wave turn and that turnaround, which both of those elements, at least in my opinion, are just okay. I mean, they definitely don't make this coaster like notable if they just had those, but really, when it comes to the second half, this ride is 
just fantastic. I really love Orion. I definitely think it was a great coaster for this park, even though it may not be like the most perfect fit. It definitely added some more variety to their collection, especially with um, the, some of like the other small coasters they have there. Um, and it really did get more of a spotlight in 2020, obviously due to the main coasters that were supposed to open in 2020, such as, you know, Pantheon, Iron Gwazi, those didn't open. So really, as you can tell, like, if you were the enthusiast in 2020, this and Candemonium really got all the attention. They both opened around the same time, and I got to ride them, like, right when they opened, which was great. I remember riding Orion, like, it was probably the second day, I think it was the second day, it was ever open to the public. It was large crowds, obviously, but it was definitely worth it. I loved Orion. Everything about it was fantastic, and I got such a good experience. Um, I've got to meet some friends there. Kings Island with Orion, just I feel like Orion just made the park better, and I feel like that would do what all gigas do, you know? I mean, gigas just add so much variety to a collection. They could easily make like a coaster that is make a park that it's just eh to a park that is great and prime example of that is carowinds i mean fury like before they had copperhead strike they added fury in 2015 and that really changed this park to be an eh park to a park that you have to visit like right when it opened like it made everyone want to go to that park i know like fury when it opened it had such long lines and it I mean, obviously, it made so much sense, and hopefully, that goes with Knott's Berry Farm. I mean, Knott's Berry Farm, as I mentioned in the ranking, like, this park really needs this coaster. Uh, something that I really noticed is all of their coasters had such long lines, especially when I went there this past November. Um, like, all the coasters, especially, like, Hang Time and Ghost Rider, those lines were absolutely ridiculous, especially, like... We we're so lucky that I got fast lane. Like we would have been waiting so long. I remember waiting in Ghost Rider for about two hours. Like it was that long. Their capacity, like that's one thing. Like that's one nitpick I have with Knott's Berry Farm is that the operations are not the fastest. They definitely do not like you know. They definitely take slower with the operations, um, and that really results in long lines. With hang time, they were only running two trains when the line was about two hours, which is absolutely insane. But now, with this supposed Giga coming to Knott's Berry Farm, it'll open up so much more time. It'll just open up so much more rides that when someone goes there, they can get. It'll uh, eat so many pre so, uh, so much people. Um, it'll be a capacity machine. It will be such good for the park. And with the crowds that Knott's Berry Farm gets, it makes so much sense for the park to do this. Um, it's really a great fit for the park if they add it. Uh, and especially in that ghost town area, it would be an absolutely great fit. But let's move on to the last segment of this podcast, this episode of this podcast. So, we have unpopular opinion. Unfortunately, Caleb's not here, so I know he has some good or popular opinions, but we will not be hearing him from him today. But I personally, I do have an unpopular opinion, and I feel like this is really good, and I feel like you probably have no idea. As the listener, you have no idea what this is going to be. This is Time Traveler. Time Traveler? Wait, what? This is an unpopular opinion? Yeah. Time Traveler. In, let's just let's walk through from the beginning. You walk up to the entrance, you go walk to the station, you're building up the hype, and you get to the station. But what I recommend to make this unpopular opinion so, like, such make make so much more sense, ride Time Traveler in the very back seat. And I will tell you about that in just a second. In the back seat, you will experience what is one of the best elements I have ever experienced that is the drop, that first drop right out of the station in the back seat. You get absolutely whipped in the back seat. It is one of the most insane elements I've ever experienced. And in my opinion, the unpopular opinion of this, it is the number one drop in the world. Which, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, that sounds crazy, right? But you have to experience it. It is 
lethal. I mean, you, what, it basically, just to explain it, you are facing backwards, you go down a 90 degree drop while you're twisting. It is one of the best elements I've ever experienced on a coaster, and that is my unpopular opinion for this episode. It is absolutely lethal. Everything about Time Traveler is so fun, but this is probably the best part of the ride, in my opinion. It is absolutely insane. I definitely recommend it. I I mean, I have so many like fun experiences with Silver Dollar City. Like, Silver Dollar City, let's just get onto that. Like, that park is so fun. I just love everything about Silver Dollar City. Hershend does a fantastic job with it. They have uh, some great coasters. They have Time Traveler, which Time Traveler, since it opened in, like, what was it, 2018? I think that's when it opened. They, it has been so fun. Time Traveler is one of the most fun coasters you will ride. Um, I really hope that, like, more parks get rides like this, like, like this mock extreme spinners. I know like Ride to Happiness, which possibly I may be riding this year, it looks absolutely insane. Like if you watch a POV of that thing, it looks absolutely insane. Like Ride to Happiness looks to be it probably just maybe in my top five coasters. Like if I ride it, it looks to be that good. Like there's so many elements of that ride that looks insane. Like I bet in the back seat it is insane, which I would be super hyped for that. But back to North Silver Dollar City, like, this park is great. Like, seriously. They have, obviously, Time Traveler. They have Outlaw Run. I know some people don't like it as much, but it is a little rough, but it's still a great RMC. Um, it's not the best RMC, obviously. Uh, if you watched the recent episode, the first episode, which was last week, I didn't, I ranked it pretty low, which I know it, it's good. I know some people, <laughs> I know definitely know some people that don't like it as much, but hey, I mean, it's still good. I, I love Alamo Run. Every time I visit, got to ride it multiple times. Such a great ride. You also have Wildfire, which is a fantastic being upside down. Um, even though maybe like out of the way, I love Wildfire. It's definitely a very fun, very fun B&M. Um, and also your Power Keg, which is, let me tell you, one of the most wackiest coasters out there it is so wacky i know it was it used to be a water ride which that just tells you how wacky it is like they have like literally have some parts of the ride that is just connected it is weird it is just a really weird coaster and silver dollar it just they have mr griffith falls everything about silver dollar city is just fantastic i mean i love silver dollar city um it's one of my favorite parks i've been to uh, I mean, <laughs> I think this just goes along with this. We are going unscripted in this podcast. It has been a fantastic episode. Uh, we will probably try to wrap it up pretty soon. Um, hope uh, pretty soon, but well, maybe we'll extend it a little bit longer. But what we are trying to do with this podcast, we are just as I said earlier, we are extending the reach of this podcast. I know uh, you can now see it on all of these platforms, and I definitely recommend you go follow it on there. I mean. You can follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, Podbeam, YouTube, on the Coaster Thrills, on the Coaster Thrills YouTube channel. We'll get episodes every week on that channel, and also our Instagram. Which seriously, yeah, go hit us up on and follow us on our Instagram. We are trying to grow this podcast so big. We have so much in store. I know this podcast, this episode specifically, um, has not been the best because. Uh, we don't have Caleb with us. Caleb really makes it so much better, but hey, um, I'm the only one here, so, I mean, hopefully you all have enjoyed this podcast, this episode. Um, it's been great. It's been a really fun time for me. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you're, let's say, let's say you're driving to work, school, any of that, or you're just working around the house, doing whatever, uh, hopefully you have found a time to listen to us. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. So, that will be it for this episode. Obviously, just go watch the rest of it we have so much more incoming for this podcast so here we go hope you enjoyed with a co-host caleb who's not here today i know he'll be watching this we know uh definitely go say hi to caleb uh just for a second just go to his just go to his instagram just just dm him just be like yeah where are you caleb uh, just let's think of something just think of something the release this episode and just DM that to him.